Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, I'm Frisia. I moved into this new place less than a month ago. And since then I've just been ordering in and eating out for practically every meal. So I thought I'd just cook every single meal today. For breakfast, we're gonna be doing a little avocado toast situation. I'm not exactly sure to what extent, but I'm just gonna wing it. Cutting open a perfectly ripe avocado never gets old. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that color. I went to Erewhon for the first time the other day and I don't really know what I was expecting, but kind of just reminded me of Whole Foods. We got these tomatoes from Erewhon because it was just so colorful. And if you're not eating as you cook, you're doing it wrong. All right, it's time to get this bread. But real quick, I wanna show you my new toaster from Balmuda, and I'm so excited to be partnering with them on this video. Balmuda the toaster. It's aesthetic goals. But the coolest part is the steam technology. I'm pouring five cc's of water, measured by this tiny cup. And the steam locks in the bread's inner moisture, and there's five different modes. I'm using sandwich bread mode. Four minutes on the clock. Look at its steam, it's like a sauna. Oh, that's our cue. I'll show you how perfect the toast came out in just a sec, but before that, let me put you on Balmuda the kettle. We love her. It's fit for about three coffee cups or two mugs. And this cute power light lets you know when the water is ready. It also features a lightweight ergonomic design with a snug groove for your thumb. TBH, Balmuda would be a fire housewarming gift. You can check them out at us.balmuda.com. Fat ass. Oh yeah. This little egg pan is a key to all of my perfect sunny side up eggs. Instead of mashing my avocados, I decided to slice them. It looks better and it's also less work. Now I'm topping it off with some bougie Erewhon heirloom tomatoes and voila. This everything but the bagel seasoning from Trader Joe's works on every type of breakfast. I'm also sprinkling on some crushed red pepper flakes. Dang, look at the vibes. This one's for Jean. My mouth is watering just thinking about that coffee. Yeah. And a second plate for me. I got these plates from Mia Style, by the way, because I know someone's gonna ask. Cheers first. Oh yeah. That is delish. Wow. The bread is crunchy on the outside, but still really pillowy and soft on the inside. Every time I eat, there's a creature staring up at me. How is it? Really good. <laughs> it's 3 p.m. It's a very awkward time to be eating, but we're gonna keep it light. We're gonna keep it small, and I'm gonna go with some kimbap. If you're not familiar with what kimbap is, it's basically a Korean seaweed rice roll. I never know how to translate Korean dishes in English. It always sounds a lot more awkward in English. You add a layer of steamed rice, put some veggies in there, any sort of protein, whether that's fish, beef. Today I'm using Spam, but if you are vegan or vegetarian, kimbap is so customizable. You can honestly make it however you want. This rice cooker has been with me since I first lived alone in 2017. I've made countless meals with this thing. Season your rice with a drizzle of sesame oil and a pinch of salt. Combine it all together and set aside to cool. Here's what I'm using for my kimbap. Spam light, because it makes me feel better about myself. Dried seaweed sheets, tanmuji, aka Korean pickled radish, spinach, two eggs, perilla leaves, and a carrot. Blanch the spinach for one minute. Then we're gonna drain and rinse with cold water so it won't burn our hands when we squeeze out all the excess water. You wanna make sure you get as much liquid out as possible. Season and toss with salt, sesame oil, and sesame seeds. A combo that epitomizes most Korean dishes. Whisk the eggs, cut the carrot into matchsticks, which will be brining in equal parts salt, 
sugar, vinegar, and water. I should have done this ahead of time, but oh well. You want to let it brine for one to two hours. Spam time. You want each ingredient for your kimbap to be thin and as long as the width of your seaweed sheet. So I'm cutting my spam into strips. Now I'm pouring my eggs into an evenly buttered pan. Emphasis on butter. It makes the egg much easier to flip into an omelet. Make sure it's cooked thoroughly before you set it aside to cool. Yes, spam is ready to eat out of the can, but you always crisp up your spam until golden. If anyone eats spam out of the can, don't trust them. The egg is cool now, so we're slicing it into long strips. I bought the pre-sliced tamaju because I'm a lazy bitch. Finally, the fun part. Lay the seaweed rough side up, spread an even layer of rice, but make sure it's not too thick. I love when kimbap has gennip, it's always a nice surprise. Layer all of your hard work into the center of your seaweed and bring it all together with a bamboo rolling mat. Now, I'm not squeezing too tight. I'm squeezing just enough for everything to pack. I'm brushing on sesame oil to give the rolls a nice shine. Pro tip, coating your knife with oil makes cutting through seaweed much easier. Kimbap is a perfect food to bring to a picnic or lunch on the go. It's reminiscent of my childhood too. A lot of Korean kids grow up eating this. Last but not least, garnish with toasted sesame seeds. And there you have it. Mm-hmm. It's been a really long time since I've had that. Jean is downstairs playing melee. He hasn't eaten yet. I'm gonna go down and share some of the love. Hello. Hi. I have a delivery. Delivery from a mom. Mmm. It's not quite time for dinner yet, but I'm gonna be making pusam tonight. And pusam is basically pork belly wraps. That sounds oversimplified. It's so much more than just that. The pork belly is marinating in this broth for about 30 to 40 minutes. And the broth is made in many different ways. Everybody has their own recipe, but some of the staple and interesting ingredients in there are coffee, apples, cinnamon. And then there are normal ingredients like garlic, ginger, onion. You always gotta add some tunjang, which is a fermented soybean paste. And instead of coffee, some people like to put beer or soju. So it, it's really up to whoever is making it. I don't have a go-to recipe. I tend to just look at a bunch of different recipes online and pull whatever I want from each one and try to make it work and hope for the best. The first thing to do ahead of time though is to brine your cabbage leaves. You gotta use Napa cabbage for the wraps and they take about one to two hours to prep. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Um, okay, all the cabbages at the store were whack. So I'm removing the outer leaves. Once you cut off the ends, thoroughly rinse and repeat about three to five times. We're actually mimicking the first step to making kimchi by brining the cabbage leaves. I'm evenly coating all the leaves with chunky sea salt and adding water to let it soak for the next hour. An hour passed, but I'm not gonna do anything with the cabbage just yet. I'm gonna let it sit for another hour as I'm working on the pork belly. For the pork, you'll need green onions. I'm using teppa, which are extremely large green onions. One apple, one medium onion, peeled ginger, 10 garlic cloves, a quarter cup of coffee, one cinnamon stick, black peppercorns, a small bay leaf, and three tablespoons of tunjang. To prep, I'm quartering my apple, removing the seeds, slicing the peeled ginger, cutting my green onion into thirds, and now we marry it all into a big pot. I'm using one slab of pork belly for three servings. Add just enough water to cover and submerge all the ingredients. Set to high heat and let it boil for 15 minutes. 
Meanwhile, I'm making my sojut sauce by mincing three cloves of garlic, half of a Korean chili pepper. By the way, make sure you save some chili pepper and garlic slices to serve on the side. Finally, chop some green onion, then add a pinch or two of Korean red pepper flakes, toasted sesame seeds, sojut, aka salted shrimp, green onion, and mix. You might want to add a tiny bit of water because this can get real salty. Okay, now that we're 15 minutes in, I'm lowering to medium high for the next 30 minutes. Then for sides, I bought pre-made seasoned dried radish strips. Say that five times fast. This one's a must with poissam. I also got frozen oysters, which have been thawed. This is totally optional, but highly recommended if you like oysters. Almost two hours later, my cabbage is just how I want it. 30 minute timer just went off, so here's the big reveal. Oh, I'm gonna set the pork aside and let it cool. It's time to plate. Not me getting romantic with my food right now. Oh my God. I'm about to open up a Poissam restaurant, that's it. So this is how you make a wrap. Get the cabbage, get a piece of pork belly, radish, cream pepper, garlic, and this is the seojot. Mmm. And you can add an oyster. This is gonna be the craziest bite. Mm. Oh. Wow! Mmm! Mm. All right, well that was breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I had a lot of fun cooking and eating all this food. If you guys have any recipe suggestions or want me to try anything, I'm all ears. Just let me know down below. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, and I'll see you in the next one.